Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I'm your host, Renee Bauer, and today I am here to have a really meaningful conversation with someone that I just recently met, um, but was immediately struck by uh, his story and his mission to really share it with others. So let me introduce you to Ted Yang. Uh, as an about-to-be-first-time father, Ted Yang thought he had it all. He was married to the love of his life. He had an impressive educational background, having finished his Master's of Engineering at MIT at age 21. He had been an executive at the world's most successful hedge funds and had been featured on major media outlets such as NPR and Wall Street Journal. He was a serial entrepreneur and had founded a whole bunch of startups and nonprofits, and he had a lucrative career in triplets on the way. But his life changed in an instant with the premature birth of his children, a death, and years of struggle. He is the author of a new book that just released called Table for Five, A Father's Story of Life, Love, and Loss, which is a number one new release on Amazon. His story is about what happens when life sends you tragedy, crisis, and then wisdom. So welcome, Ted. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So this, your story um, is, is so heartfelt. And as I was reading your book, I was just so touched and so emotional um, and just feeling all of the feels because you're so honest and open and so authentic about um, about telling it. So I'm going to start with my first question, exactly where your book starts. And that is, how many children do you have? Well, I, I, I have three. Um, I have two survivors. And so your children were born at 24 weeks. Um, but prior to their birth, you had a really Im nearly impossible decision to make um, during your wife's pregnancy. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So, uh, you know, it should be obvious to everyone that uh, the human body, the female body, I should say, was designed to go one at a time. Uh, two is uh, a bit uh, asking much. And uh, actually, twins run in my wife's family. So we were actually hoping for and kind of happy that we got twins. But we did go to an ultrasound appointment and they found a third heartbeat. And that was really, you know, <laughs> beyond uh, because it really increases the risk the more uh, babies you have, of course, and uh, neither my wife nor myself are big people that can <laughs> uh, you know, think that that would be anything that uh, would be able to fit in there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, as they, they were clicked to point out, uh, you know, again, like the, the, the numbers don't look very good. And so early on, you know, we were faced with a decision about whether or not uh, we would reduce the pregnancy, um, which is you know, kind of a euphemism, uh, and then have two. Uh, and, um, you know, I cover that in the book, but broadly speaking, uh, we didn't do it. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we, I'm a numbers guy, right? Uh, I'm an M&T engineer, uh, you know, I've worked on the street and other places and I still, you know, uh, I'm pretty hands-on in a lot of different things and like to get into the details. And when you look at the numbers alone, uh, it didn't make sense, but also from an emotional standpoint, it didn't make sense. Mm. We really weren't, uh, willing to give up on, uh, the baby that turned out to be my daughter. And, and so were the doctors encouraging you to terminate one of them? Well, the, I mean, they were pretty neutral about it, but the, it was clear which way. I mean, if you, you know, read the facial expressions, if you will, uh, just because they've seen it, right? And I think, again, from a number standpoint, you know, when you have a lot of cases and you see it and you know what's going on, they knew what we were kind of setting ourselves up for. Not a guarantee, right? Not a guarantee but a pretty good percentage, right? That would certainly result in prematurity, um, which is why preterm, uh, sorry, full, full term birth for triplets is less than 40 weeks. Um, and, uh, but we were even more extreme than that. And of course we, could, we didn't anticipate that. We anticipated there probably would be problems, but uh, we figured we would be able to get through them. And so at week 24, she goes into labor and she gives birth to three live babies. And then that's when really the challenges just start on another whole level. So how were they, they born? What, what was their health like when they came into this world? Yeah. And so we tried obviously to stop it, right? So she was on bed rest on magnesium and various different uh, techniques that they have. 
um, you know, in the perinatal war to try to hold it off. Um, but uh, that only could go for a few days. Uh, and ultimately, uh, the kids came out. When they came out, they were, you know, healthy, but tiny, right? Mm -hmm. I, beyond tiny. I mean, you know, you know, on your arm, you know, like not, not even, you know, like, you know, <laughs> not even my arm, right? Um, which is amazing if you can see how big they are now. But the, uh, the really, the, the, the surprise was the, also the weight, right? So we're talking, you know, 600 and change on grams, you know, a little pound and a half. Um, unbelievable, right? So you, the three of them together, were not the size of their cousin, which was born uh, a little bit after and actually should have been older than my kids. Um, so it's, uh, you know, four and a half pounds, right? That's not, that's not much even for a full term baby, right? So, but they, they came out healthy. I, you know, I, I was watching, I was there, uh, it's in the book, <laughs> an interesting scene. And uh, they just were run off to, you know, the NICU in their own little pods right away um, because they needed some care, uh, you know, even just to, to survive right, right from the beginning. And so when did things turn? Uh, that's an interesting question. I, you know, I, 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 how long was the honeymoon, if you will? Uh, hours. Uh, you know, honestly, right after their birth, I couldn't see them either. Uh, so I, you know, went up with my wife uh, when, you know, she went upstairs, uh, you know, after uh, leaving the OR. And we were talking then. And then I, I was able to go down and see my children before my wife was, uh, obviously. And, uh, you know, they were, you know, again, through glass, couldn't see anything. Um, you know, really couldn't make anything out, but, uh, you know, the doctors were already informing me that, you know, here are some of the measures we've already taken, uh, to try to get them to, uh, survive. Um, they all breathed on their own day one in immediately or minute one, I should say immediately. So that's good. Uh, mm -hmm. and that does tend to happen, uh, with some of these babies that are born live, but, uh, you know, almost right away, like that first day we started to, um, you know, have, have issues and decisions that needed to be made, but nothing hyper critical in the scheme of things. Uh, compared to some of the decisions we had to make uh, later, but uh, of course at the time it was everything was just like whoa, oh my god, like wow, you have to give you know this and do that and drugs and that. And it's like okay, wow, like that's a this is this is overwhelming. Um, and then of course compared to later on, it was nothing. <laughs> so did they actually come home with you? No. So uh, so my one son, I lost my one son after a week. Um, so my, my children were born on September 4th. And so that was September 11th, uh, you know, one of those days, unfortunately, uh, that resonates. And, uh, and so my, my son Raymond passed on that day. Uh, and my daughter, uh, my other son, uh, Daniel was there basically until full term, uh, his normal due date, which again is relatively standard in this, in premature cases. And so he didn't come home until December. And then my daughter didn't come home for eight months. And when wow. she you know, came home after eight months. And mind you, at that period of time, my son was home and my daughter wasn't. And so that's an interesting thing as well. And uh, my daughter, again, was, uh, you know, in a different ward going through more um, uh, different surgeries and what have you. And by the time she was able to come home, finally, um, she came home on uh, with a trach um, and a breathing tube, right, in her throat and of, on, on a ventilator. And she required round the clock, 24 hour care. So what, and I'm trying to wrap my, my brain around just the going through that because I can only imagine how traumatic and how emotional and devastating every single day of that was immediately that week after, and then even the months after. So what do you do? How do you move on? How do you get up every day? Like, what did your, your days look like during those months after? I... You know, I wish I really knew. I, 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 a lot of that was a blur. Honestly, um, I think there was a couple of particular points that were harder, obviously, in the death of my son. And the harder part was really going back in the next day, right? Like that, that, was, that was the problem was, for me, um, it was we're going back to the exact same place uh, because we've got two other children fighting for their lives, right? And that, that was, was, you know, pretty hard. Um, beyond that, uh, you know, when she came home, again, I, I, I honestly don't know. I say to my wife all the time, I don't know how we survived um, those first, you know, almost 18 months. Um, because, you know, I had my son, I had my daughter, she was fragile. Uh, all sorts of things would happen. Again, um, when you mm -hmm. breathe through a, a breathing tube, uh, many, many different bad things can happen, right? So in addition to all the prematurity issues and what have you, babies wiggle, uh, they move uh, and they dislodge their trachs or their trachs get stuck mm -hmm. because of mucus or other things. And uh, without constant care and awareness, um, what happens is, uh, you know, she will suffocate. And it happened many times. 
Um, and uh, again, there's some 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 pretty uh, poignant scenes in the book. And so I don't know. Um, you know, thankfully, uh, I had saved some money. Um, you know, I had fan, friend, friends and family. Um, you know, my mother lived with us. Um, you know, she brought a, a full time housekeeper. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, because we were zombies, right? And yeah. uh, you know, neither of us were able to do pretty much anything other than the unbelievable mountain of work it takes to uh, take care of children in your house um, and, and essentially run an ICU. Um, you know, everything from administrative uh, to you know, interfacing with doctors and nurses to uh, ordering healthcare uh, equipment. Uh, and, and drugs, everything, um, to taking over as nurses. Um, because again, 24 hour, it, 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 about 90 seconds to suffocate uh, when you're that size. And so uh, constant vigilance. So when her nurses, you know, when it would snow and, you know, here in Connecticut, it snows. Um, and uh, certainly then it quite snowed quite a lot. And uh, when it snowed, it, you know, the nurses wouldn't be able to make it here. And so on no morning, my wife or I would have to stay up all night or all day wow. or both. Or I think the record was, you know, three days in a row, uh, just shifting, just going her or me. So I don't know is, is the answer. I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> and, and yet, and yet you still were grieving the loss of another child too. So you have to do all of this and function as a more than fully functional adult. Like you had to be plus, 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 but also grieve. How did, how did, how did you do that? How did, cause I mean, I, I think that my reaction is, oh my God, like I would, I would crawl under the covers and like pull them over my head. And I don't think I would want to face the world. So how did you do all of that, that you just described, but also have that time to heal and really just grieve for, for the loss that you had? Yeah. Well, I don't think, I don't think I did. I know. I, in fact, I know I didn't. Um, I don't think my wife did really either. I think it took years before we, it, things were calm enough or, uh, you know, I could be reflective enough about the loss of my son. Uh, you know, and I, I it, you know, it, it sounds bad, but I, it's, it's, you know, we had to be there for our, our survivors. I think for me also, it isn't in my nature, really. I, you know, I've lost people. I, I, I'm not a griever, whatever that means. Um, I like to think about it, uh, you know, and reflect as much as I can. But uh, I, it isn't something that um, I spend honestly a lot of time on. And, and a lot of this is really, when you're in the heat of the moment, you, you fight. And this was, you know, a constant battle um, over, you know, many, many, many months. So it was, you know, adrenaline high and low. But every day there was just something urgent and needed happening. And that is, you know, a, a, perhaps a welcome distraction, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and then that, that's how you can keep on is you don't, you know, I've, I've talked to plenty of people. I have friends who've, who've gone through things or losses or major traumas or what have you. And you, you don't think about the big picture. You can't. You think mm -hmm. about every day or every hour or every minute and you just wow. walk it forward. And that's, that's, I think, what we did. What about your relationship with your wife, Christine? What, what impact did this have? I mean, I'm sure there's an added stressor that the two of you were going <laughs> through this and everyone goes through things a different way and it looks different. Like you're talking about grieving in one sort, sort of way and maybe it was different for her, but how did the two of you get through it together? You know, again, ups and downs, ups and downs. I think, you know, no, neither of us is, is perfect, anything close to that. I think when there were plenty of emergencies, we, we jumped in. I think we're very comfortable in what we, each of us are good at. Um, I I'm, happen to be pretty good under pressure. Um, I happen to be very good at even when things are falling apart to be very clear on here's what has to happen and needs to be done. Um, and I think that this was kind of an extended period of that and we were able to jump in and, and understand what each other's strengths uh, were. Um, but it was hard, honestly. Right. I mean, I, I'm a very passionate person, uh, you know, and uh, we were unable to, you know, we had strangers in our house constantly, mm. right? Uh, even if you, whether you, I know you count my mother or not, <laughs> um, certainly to her, uh, she was a stranger. And certainly as an adult, uh, no man wants to live with his mother. Um, but, you know, <laughs> she was there. She had to. Someone needed to take care of Daniel because otherwise, you know, again, not a, 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 one of us had to be the nurse. The other person was asleep because they were just the nurse. So right. who's taking care of the, you know, my son? 
so, and, and then of course we had, uh, so if you had surgeries and other things like that. So there was, there were constantly people in and out of my house and we were never, never able to, to not just get away, um, but even really be uh, a couple, <laughs> you know, not until, uh, you know, and this is in the book, not until we were out of surgery at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, which is a fantastic place. Um, and we had no other alternatives. And my son was at home with my mom. Uh, so uh, we would no opportunity to really do that. And again, maybe that is a secret. Again, maybe that uh, you you don't you know jump into that. Um, but I think you know relative to marriages, it certainly put us under a lot of stress. I think that most uh, and this is not in the book, but you know things really um, uh, for our marriage. I think we hit uh, we had we had that point where things were really really bad, but didn't happen until long after the health mm-hmm. crises were over, right? I think for both of us, it was look, this is important. This is, this is much more important, right? Keeping my daughter right. alive um, and, and, and uh, you know, trying to, to get past all of these things and, uh, you know, as much as we can. And, uh, you know, the rest of it can wait. Uh, and so when, when some of that pressure came off, um, you know, it was harder for us. Um, and then I think all, you know, the, the, he, he, I, I don't know how much is true for other couples, but I think certainly, you know, you don't tend to forget. I personally, she will tell you, doesn't don't forget anything. And, you know, <laughs> you just kind of just file it away and then it all comes out right when you can. And, um, you know, so I, I, it, it's hard. I, 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 I really, again, wish I could say I've got this amazing advice. Just read my book and you'll know how. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that's not true. Uh, and, and, you know, you read the book and you, you realize maybe this is how, you know, one group of people were able to do it. One, sorry, one couple were able to do it and, um, but take what lessons you can on that. I don't think there was a silver bullet. But you do actually say something that is, I think a little golden nugget of advice. And you say in your book, you play the hand you were dealt and try not to look over your shoulder at other people's cards and how, how do you, how do we do that in a world where we're in constant comparison? And, you know, I'm sure you're scrolling through social media and you see other people's kids, they're healthy and aren't experiencing this. How does someone do, and I think that the advice is so important and so good, but how do you really do that in, in reality? Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's, it's a lot about understanding what makes, uh, what's important, what, what makes the difference to you. And I think that, uh, you know, the, the publicity, marketing and, and uh, you know, the American culture writ large is very good at telling you just do this and you'll get that. And I think most people in their hearts know that's not true. Right. And there was a place that used to be filled by religion here in this country. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and in that place, in that building or with that community, um, you know, that was very obvious that, yeah, the other other items, the material things, the what have you. Um, the grass isn't greener and, uh, you know, kind of understand your place in the world or the universe even. And, uh, you know, uh, whether that's a Saturday or Sunday or whatever day of the week it is. Right. And, and you, you could learn that. And I, I think as America's moved away from that, we haven't filled it with anything. Uh, and so the, uh, you know, the, the religion of, uh, Instagram, I don't think is, is so as, as healthy, uh, you know, blame, you know, uh, again, you can, you can talk, I can talk about this all day, but I think that relative to yourselves, and relative to understanding, if, if, you, if you want to measure yourself by someone else, you'll always come up short, right? Mm-hmm. I, this is the one thing I've learned, um, you know, even before this, um, you know, t- talking to plenty of people who've achieved success in pretty ridiculous ways and have unbelievable amounts of money. And, you know, the first thing that anyone likes to say is like, like I, if I stop to think about that or I stop to think about what I have or didn't have, I wouldn't have it. Right. And, and if you think that it's just the, the having that makes you happy, well, it doesn't work that way. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, our, 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 our bodies are wired um, to want to accumulate things. That's a survival mm-hmm. instinct, but they're also wired um, so that the amount of dopamine we get is reduced every time we get the thing. So if you look over your shoulders and you, and you wonder why, well, you know, you're, you're never going to be there. And uh, you know, I don't think anyone misses the joke on this, but you know, the people that seem like they've got perfect and amazing lives still put their pants on one leg at a time. Uh, still, still have to deal with uh, probably, you know, family issues and what have you. And uh, you know, the grass isn't greener and you know, it's a lot about understanding what you have. And I think from this, this experience really helped me a lot. I mean, in, in that sense, right. Because, you know, I was in the finance world in the hedge fund world, even, right. And there's so much materialism that comes with that. And, uh, you know, when you go through this and you realize that you come out the other end, you, you, you know, wow, 
what what's the deal? And then that, you know, that to me, and then this is this is partly stuff I talk about is what drove me to really be an entrepreneur. Because that was always in my blood. Um, but it wasn't always the path. And now, you know, it was, wow, man, do I want to go back and work for the man? Or do I want to do something that's a little bit closer to me? So as you sit here today, can you say that you actually have come out the other end? I know your kids are 12 now. Um, at what point did you start to see really the light? Well, I, I, no, I think the story is continually ongoing. Um, so, uh, you know, this is not quite yet the promo for, for, but no, I don't, I don't know if there will be, but I mean, in all honesty, the story isn't over, right? I mean, my, my kids were born premature and that's something that will live with them for their lives in terms of, uh, developmental delays, um, you know, in terms of, uh, physical issues. So my daughter still has, uh, she's still physically disabled, classified as such, um, because of, of things that happened, um, along that journey to get them there. And, and my son has autism. So the, the, the journey is far from over in terms of, of my children. And so I, I, I don't think I'm the other end I, but as you say uh when do i think i saw the light i mean i think the the, the biggest thing uh was sophia breathing uh, uh you know out of her mouth and her nose i mean it was you know that that day um and it, it's you know it's seared into my mind and watching her gasp for breath i mean that that you know like any other baby does or actually like she did to be clear but then of course went backwards that that is to me the the moment right because then it was we have a chance at a normal life and I, I don't I don't want to sound callous because there are so many kids that are worse off I mean I that's the one thing that, that you know the, the hand you're dealt thing right um, it works both ways right and and that's the one thing that we were like wow you know what like we have a chance for for my kids to not have medical problems and we were we are so thankful that that we were able to get past that with the help of so many amazing people um, and 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 amazing healthcare. That, that just got me choked up just listening to you because, I mean, it's, it really is such a beautiful way of looking at something when someone else could look at that and say, why me, poor me, you know, and, and I think it's easy to do that, but you're, you kind of flip this on the head and you almost sound thankful for the experience that you have. And I think that that's something to, that we can take away from this because it's so easy to fall into that victim mentality. Yeah. No, I think that's right. I, I, I don't, again, I, I, it wasn't easy <laughs> and, and there's no shortcut. I, you know, there's no shortcut. You can listen to this and go, that makes a lot of sense. And then, you know, you see that wonderful picture. It looks like, you know, your friends are on some private jet somewhere and you're like, wow. Not my I mean, friends. Oh, okay. Well, you know, <laughs> not mine either. I, I'm just saying, we but, but somehow I see those pictures anyway. Yeah. People, maybe, maybe my friends are sharing them and that's the problem. <laughs> So you, you wrote this book and the, the title in and of itself is just really impactful, Table for Five. Why did you write it? I mean, you're, you're an engineer, you're a numbers <laughs> guy, and you, you wrote this. Were you always a writer? And then why this book? No, that's, a, that's a, the shortest answer, easiest answer. No, I, I, I don't really even consider myself a writer. I have a fantastic editor, uh, Vera, and, and kudos to her. Um, you know, I wrote it for me, right? I mean, it was a catharsis. The first time I wrote this, the first time I started to write this, I wrote it for me. Um, I had actually encouraged my wife to um, write something uh, about her experience. Uh, we did keep a blog. Blog is still up, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, the, that, was, that was part of it. And then I asked her, you know, if she wanted to do this, because she is a liberal arts major, right? A history major um, and, and a better writer than me. But uh, it, wasn't and she still isn't. This isn't. This isn't the thing that she wants to do. So I, for me, I started to write it for me, um, about two and a half years ago. And then at some point, I said, "Look, you know what? This is a story that needs to get out there because there's not dad stories out there." And and you know, Ray, that's the thing, right? That um, this is Prematurity Awareness Month, and uh, you know, the book is uh, formally coming out. The print version uh, is going to come out on World Prematurity Day, which is the 17th. And on that day, uh, you're going to hear plenty of stories, but you rarely. I've never heard a dad story that day yeah. never and uh and and you know okay cool maybe i'll be the first but that's not the point the point is other dads haven't either and and other dads you know we dads we men are so great at opening up to each other right um and 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 so you know if, if me by by being transparent and vulnerable can get out there and encourage other people to say hey um you know what you need to listen to this or I need to listen to this, right? So mom's telling dads, well, husbands and wives, and, you know, girlfriends, whatever, and they go, this is, look at this guy 
and, 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 you know, maybe this gives me a permission to share my story. Um, uh, because that's the one other thing is, 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 is as I've had these, these lunches, right. And these interactions with people, uh, and, and then told them stories, uh, about my children, people will share with me. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, even, even a couple of days ago, you know, I've made a post on my LinkedIn and people how I didn't know had gone through this say, Hey, we got something in common. And I'm like, Holy cow. Right. And, 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 uh, why has this never come up? <laughs> right. Why has it never come up? It's so defining, you know, and it, it's, it's so difficult, but it's, it's, you know, that was really what drove me to really say, Hey, you know what, this is a story that needs to get out there. Um, and then of course my natural way that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it well. Um, and, uh, you know, I want to, I want, you know, people to hear about it and, uh, you know, and, and, and hopefully get something out. What's your take on why there aren't more dad's voices talking about this, this stuff? Um, well, I think, again, dads or men are really, really terrible at sharing. Uh, they're terrible at vulnerability. I think, interestingly enough, you know, in, in uh, you know, uh, the society, uh, your celebrity society right now, you've got a couple of uh, dads come out with, like, with some, some big stories, right, yeah. about child loss or whatever, like, like John Legend and what have you, uh, which kudos to that, right? And, and, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, if, if he can build an audience through by saying that, and, and that helps a lot. But, I, 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 you know, I think that's one thing. Right. Um, I think that uh, it's not that we don't need help. <laughs> that's for damn sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I did, you know, reach out and try to look a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, you know, for help. Um, and there were no resources, really. And, you know, I, I was so lucky to have um, a, a very good friend, um, you know, uh, Dr. Bob in, in the book, who I dedicated the book to, um, uh, who was a, a neonatologist out, out, out in San Francisco, who, who knew this stuff beyond the back of his hand, right? Like, like lived and breathed it. And more importantly, knew and was a caring man. Um, he's passed, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, the, the, having him was filled in that gap, right? Because if I didn't, not just from a medical standpoint, that would have been bad, but also from a, like, how do I stand as a, as a, as a, as a father, as a human being when I'm powerless, powerless? Uh, and, and, and can't do anything. I, I, that's just, you know, it, it's not a comfortable place for anybody. And, 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 I, and again, I don't think men are good at admitting that. Um, you know, the other part, I think maybe, uh, you know, I can't help but, but, but put my businessman hat on, which is that uh, I don't think the market is as big, right, for men's mm-hmm. stories, um, unless your last name is uh, Jagger. I, I don't think uh, a lot of people uh, care. Uh, and now, and I hope that that, that changes. I think that, uh, you know, the... the <clears throat> Interestingly enough, I think that there there are good stories, and you know I'm not just saying that. I, you know I think there are plenty of other men's stories out there, but I think that to the degree you see men being vulnerable, it's yeah. been narrowed down to very particular cases and very particular things which are socially acceptable. And like, let's just get over ourselves. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I, I think it's so important because I know like there are so many men who are really vulnerable and really sensitive, and they hurt too. And it's sad that when there is such a huge loss like that the focus is always on the mom and the mother who's grieving and her pain is so deep and immense and it's not, i i almost feel like we do forget sometimes um we yeah do and it, be- it belongs with the mother right i mean the mom is the one that's with both right 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 but i mean i, I listen i i'm okay with 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 you know the mom being the first among equals if you will right um, and that, that's okay with me. And I, I, and I do say that, and I, I do hold to that, right? You know, when it's child loss, I mean, like, I, I think being a father is, is huge. It's important. Uh, you know, I, I, I it, it defines me. I think it defines all fathers, yeah. but, um, you know, I, I think when, when a mother loses a child or goes through changes like this, I'm okay with them being, being first, but I mean, you, you know, you, you got to come back and, 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 and help the fathers too. Yeah. Yeah, it's such important work. And I think that I, I think your story is going to resonate with so many fathers out there who are afraid to talk about it, but they're suffering too. So it's, you know, I thank you for putting such beautiful words in the world. And your story is just so raw. And um, I mean, it's really it's it's just and it's not just for dads, too. I mean, I think that this is just a story for anyone who has had suffered any sort of loss. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's so well done and so well written, even though you're a numbers guy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I, I think it, you know, it, it, the loss I think is, is multiple, right? I mean, the, yeah. uh, not to 
make a pun on that, but the, you know, there's the loss of, of my son, which is one thing. And then I think that the other thing is, is the, it, which I cover on, it was, is really the loss of, of dreams, if you will. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, I think this is, this is a hard one and I don't even thinking about it now, I'm not sure that my children, well, I, I hope in, uh, that they will be able to appreciate um, that, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what I'm thinking about right now, which is that, that I, I, I've had to, to, to completely think differently about the path that my children would take. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I, not to, to my own horn, but you know, whatever, I was a, whatever, smart kid that, you know, went on a very, path, very, very uh, linear path that went kind of, you know, up. And, um, in, I, 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 my children are not like that. And I, I don't know, um, if they ever will be right. And, and so that part of it, I think is also, uh, an important, you know, loss and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, even in my own marketing materials, I don't talk about that much perhaps because I have an aversion to really opening up about it. I gotta be ready about it. Um, but, uh, but it is part of the story. And so, so yeah, I, I think that on, on both sides, right. That, you know, having a child is, 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 you know, you want them to be healthy, but you also want them to be happy. Right. And, uh, and you want them to be independent and you want them to thrive and you want them to do all that. And, and for me, you know, the, what that would take, uh, you know, uh, not, not just, you know, whatever, uh, 20 some years of, of not being able to go out and, uh, have, have a drink with my buddies whenever I want to, um, you know, or go out with my wife and, and travel around the world when we want to. No, no, no. It's, 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 uh, our path is, is a little bit longer and deeper than that. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, coming to that understanding, I think is just another part of the, of the story. Yeah. Beautiful. Where can we find your book and how do we purchase it? Yes. Well, so it's, it's available for pre-order on Amazon. Um, there are some links. I'm, I'm sure we can see that I share them on your site. Probably the easiest place to find it. Mm -hmm. um, Table for five um, happens to be the number one new release right now for uh, fatherhood and, and, and pregnancy and childbirth, which is amazing, by the that way. That is amazing. I, I, Congratulations. I, 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 thank you. I, I, uh, I don't know uh, what I really did to do that. <laughs> so, um, but, but, uh, but great. And it's a good thing. And then uh, that's right now ebook. And if you are a print type of person uh, on November 17th, you can order and, and uh, you know, it'll, it'll come to your house very quick. I, uh, you know, I just uh, approved the final proof last Friday and uh, you know, and I think it looks pretty good. So uh, that's, that's the place. Um, the, there's more stuff on the website, which is uh, pdhelp.com, uh, P E D I help. Dot com. That's also got more information on the book and, um, you know, you can find me all over the place and LinkedIn, Twitter, or wherever else. And, uh, you know, if you want to find out or talk about or have more information about the book. And so my final question for you is what advice do you have for someone who's been handed a, um, or dealt a hand that they don't want? <laughs> well, I mean, I, look, I think when it comes to your children, you know, you, you can't send them back. Right. So, um, you know, in other cases you might want to fold, right. Um, you know, career situations or, you know, business situations or entrepreneurial situations, um, you know, that, that may be the right move, frankly, but a lot of people don't want to do that until it's way too late. Um, but in the situations where it's your children, um, you, you can't do that. You have to keep on fighting. I think that the one thing is, you know, draw strength on the people around you. I, you know, um, I am an entrepreneur now many times over. And, uh, you know, the one thing I can't stand is when it, no one really says this, but it's like one of the thing that everyone like, you know, apocryphally says, which is that, you know, it's only business, right? Quote, unquote, mm -hmm. it's only business. This is why I'm going to screw you over. And it's like, well, no, really, actually, there's no such thing. It's only people. It's only relationships. Everything else is really kind of just contrived. And, uh, you know, that's what's going to make the difference, right? And if you're, pay, you're dealt a hand, um, you know, with your children or in any other context that, um, you know, you have to play and uh, you, uh, you know, what are you going to do about it? I mean, understand that it's the people around you that are going to make that difference, that are going to, they're going to find a way through. Um, and then I guess on some level, you know, power through. Um, you know, if, if it hurts to think about the future too far, then don't. Um, don't, you know, one step ahead at a time, um, you know, and, uh, and, and just, you know, look around and, and be thankful for whatever is good and, and draw strength in that to, to try to hopefully resolve um, whatever the problems are that you're facing. Thank you, Ted, so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you so much for having me.